Hi everybody, just a brief video today to look at a tool or maybe more of a concept is a better way of putting it of how we would work with or incorporate custom content into our civil 3D environment. We're going to we're going to do that by leveraging what's uh, what's called a support file search path or by setting up a custom area. So let me let me explain. When I'm working in civil 3D, civil 3D is already predefined to use a lot of content right out of the box. I can see where Civil 3D looks for that content by typing in the command options, and when I hit enter, looking under the Files tab under the Support File Search Path. If I click on the plus, this goes down through and it shows me all the different locations when Civil 3D requires something uh, where it looks, and it actually looks in the list from the top all the way down to the bottom. Now as we look at this, this is a default install, with the exception you see I've got a folder down here at the bottom that's called Jerry Custom. This is a folder where I put my own content that I want to make sure Civil 3D can find that I can incorporate without having to maybe figure out where to sprinkle it into the other folders. All right, let me explain a little bit further. We'll cancel out of here. Let's say for a moment I've got a folder that contains some custom content. Maybe it's got some custom blocks. In this case, I've got a Lamborghini block. Uh, maybe I've got some custom text fonts. In this case, I've got dash and outline or custom fonts. And yes, they are from back in 1988 and 1989. So these files will still migrate forward. I've also got a custom line type file and some custom shapes that are incorporated within that line type. All right. Now, having looked at options before, I could see there was a number of folders. One of them was for fonts and things like that. I could go through and sprinkle these into these folders to incorporate it into my standard Civil 3D install. But the thing that I want to keep in mind is what happens when I get Civil 3D 2019 and 2020 and the next version beyond that. Um, if I were to remove that from my system, then I'm going to have to go back and find these files. If instead I put it in a custom folder, it makes it a lot more portable and makes it easier for me to move those, move that data or move that information around. All right, so let me, let me show you from a, a file standpoint, maybe for my Lamborghini, to show that I can't find it right now, I'm going to type in the command insert with a minus sign in front of it. That gives me the old fashioned command line driven version of insert. When I hit that, it's going to ask me to give it the name, and I'm going to type in the name of my block, and when I hit enter, it gives me uh, the beep sound, and then it shows me all of the paths that it's looking for with content that has that name, and it can't find it, obviously because it's somewhere that it, uh, it's unaware of. Well, that folder happens to be on my C drive in a, uh, in a Tuesday folder. Let's, uh, let's go back. We'll take a look at that if we go down onto C. Here is my Tuesday folder. All right, that contains the information for that block and then also dash and outline text uh, fonts and then my JDB like custom line types. So let's do this. I'm going to go into options. If I would like to incorporate that into my list so that Civil 3D will always look for that content, I'm going to click on the plus. We'll come down to the bottom here. Like you can see, I already take advantage of that myself. Let's go ahead and add a new one. Adds an entry to the bottom. We'll click on Browse. I'm going to go to C. We'll come down to Tuesday. We'll say OK. And from this point forward, when we try and access content or we look for things or open up a file, rather than saying that it can't find the content with respect to text fonts and stuff like that, it will now find it on my system. I'm currently doing this on my C drive. If I was in an environment where I had multiple people working on projects, what I could do is create a custom folder out on a network, and then if I put my custom content out there, immediately everybody else when they restarted Civil 3D would have access to that content as well. All right, so great way to make it portable. Next version of Civil 3D that comes out, I install it. I automatically add my custom folder to the bottom, and I'm, I'm ready to go. So let's try it out. We'll go ahead and uh, click on Apply. We're going to type in Insert. Now, I may have to restart my machine. We'll see. If I type in Insert and we give it the name again and hit Enter, now it immediately finds my Lamborghini. We'll hit that. We'll enter my scale factor rotation, and I'm... I'm ready to go. So there's my uh, my block. Let's try uh, one of the lines uh, or line types. So we'll draw a line from here to here. And I'm going to type in the command line type. We see the default ones that have been set up. I'm going to say load. I'm going to go out to 
my custom line types that are in my Tuesday folder. Let's make sure that's the one that's on my C drive. So in my Tuesday folder, there's my JWB line file. We'll go ahead and click on open and these are my custom line types. Now, why is this important? Why do I need this in a folder that's in a place that I can not only find it, but a centralized location? Some of these line types require custom uh, objects or, or symbology that if that wasn't in a, a location that Civil 3D found automatically, it would come up and it would bark at me every time I would open the file and say that it can't find it. So let's go ahead and do something here maybe for uh, a uh, proposed, uh, or proposed uh, storm sewer. We'll click on OK. It automatically loads that. There's my uh, custom symbology for that. We'll go ahead and select it. Uh, click on OK. And then just to test it, we'll select this. We'll go into Properties here. Here is my uh, custom symbology. And then maybe to make it a little easier to see, we'll just bump it up to 5 for right now. I know that uh, I should have it on a layer and you know have it be by layer and, and whatnot. But I'm just showing you that the symbology can be found. And it was a quick way to incorporate that. Let's do the same thing with our text. I'm going to put in some text here. We'll go M text, make a box. We'll call it uh, uh, sample text. Sample text. And we'll make that a little bit bigger. We'll set that. We'll try five on that as well. The text height. We'll set that to five. That's, uh, that'll work. Take and make that a little bit bigger. Okay, so it's textile standard is what was used. Let's go ahead and type in the style command. If we had uh, now redefined that, we had two of them. There was a dash and there was outline. Remember also that those, those files are pretty close to 30 years old at this point. If we come back and look at uh, dash here, we see that now because it is in that search path, it's automatically available in my list. Now, this works fantastic for SHX files. If we're going to get into true type fonts, I can't necessarily uh, bury them into the custom folder because true type fonts are handled differently by Windows. We have to install them. Um, but SHX files, absolutely. We throw it in that folder. They'll automatically show up on my list. If it was on a network drive that everybody was pointed to, everybody would see it on their list as well. So we'll select that. I'll click Apply close there is my dashed textile we'll do one more the other one was outline so we will uh, go ahead and say style redefine that instead of dash we'll come down make sure that we can see outline lmno here it is right here we will uh, say apply close there is my uh, outline textile all right so once again very uh, very quick very easy by setting up a custom support file search path, I am able to put files that I would typically use within my Civil 3D environment in that one folder. It makes them portable, that I can move it from uh, install to install. It lets me put them in a centralized location that I can deploy them to other machines automatically. And it just makes it easier for me to work with custom content. Uh, oh, one other thing that I should point out is because it reads in those folders from top down, if you had any other, another textile or something in there that was called dash or outline that it would find higher up in the list. Let's take a look at that real quick. If we found, if it were to have found it in the fonts folder here, let's say I had another one that was called outline, it would obviously find it here first and not go any further down, which is why there are tools in the list uh, that we can select these and we can move them up and down. All right, so uh, I can reorder it in the list to where it makes sense. Also keeping in mind that Civil, Th Civil 3D or MAP or AutoCAD maybe re require something else from these that uh, it, you, know, you don't want it to uh, find before it, or it should find before it finds your custom content. So uh, keep track of that. It's best if it uh, is automatically found somewhere higher up would maybe be to rename your content so your custom stuff is, is uh, always located at the bottom. All right, it's the last thing that it finds. Okay, so with that, I, uh, if you have any custom content would like to incorporate, this would be certainly uh, an approach to consider. I hope this is helpful, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.